Hey, y'all. Uh, good morning. Okay, so I went to a tax sale this morning, and I'm in Floyd County, Georgia right now. Um, and I went to the tax sale, and I videoed the whole thing for you. And now I've got tons of people with tons of questions. So I'm going to try to answer the questions as best as I can. Now, if you are interested in tax sale properties and buying stuff at tax sales, then you need to do some research on your county because every state is different and every county is different. Um, first thing that they did at this sale, I went in Floyd County, Georgia, in Rome, Georgia. They gave us this piece of paper. And the first line says that it's... Um, sold as is and it's by public auction the second line says buyer beware beware and the third one says don't buy a property sight unseen all right the first three things that this paper says is do your homework do your research make sure you know what you're buying um, and then it goes on to you know get into some other details of things but the most important thing about buying tax sales is that you have to remember that they have a year most places they have a year right of redemption the people that owe the back taxes have a year that they can come back and say oh I'm gonna pay up the taxes and the property's mine again alright so if you watched this video that I did um, while I was at the tax sale you'll see that let's say somebody owed a seven hundred and fifty three dollars and eighteen cents well they auctioned they had a tax sale today and they probably had ten or fifteen properties that they sold and if a person owed seven fifty three and eighteen cents most of the properties today the county bought so what does that mean how does the county buy well according to the county that I'm in right here right now in Georgia if I showed up at the tax sale and I was going to want to buy a property and it came up and they owed seven fifty three eighteen, I could either pay seven fifty three eighteen or I could pay seven fifty five. I could get into a bidding war with somebody and pay seven seventy five, eight hundred, eight twenty five, eight thirty, eight fifty. A thousand. I, I could pay anything I wanted to above and beyond what they owed in taxes. If I did that, then in this county that I'm in right here, and every county is different, <coughs> if these people showed up tomorrow and wanted to clear up their back taxes, they would pay whatever I paid at the sale plus 20%. So if they owed seven fifty three eighteen and I bought it for a thousand dollars, they have a year that they can come back and buy back this tax property from me, but they have to pay twenty percent. Okay, so they could have paid up seven fifty three eighteen, but because I went to the auction and I bid and got into a fight with somebody and I paid a thousand, now they're gonna have to pay a thousand plus twenty percent. They're gonna have to pay twelve hundred. If you watch the video though, you know that most of these properties the county bought back. That means if and when these people come back to clear up their taxes on it, then they're going to have to pay the county 20%. So if the county bought it for the 753.18 that was owed in back taxes, then the people would have to bring 753 plus 20% if they wanted to get the taxes paid up and everything back into their name. Now, there's a couple things that I need to warn you about tax sales. One thing is you more than likely when you buy something at a tax sale, the county or the city, whoever's doing the sale, they're going to give you a quit claim deed. Q U I T, quit claim deed. And the quit claim deed says that if the county has any rights or privileges or ownership in this land, they're going to give it to you. A quit claim deed is not a fee simple deed. It's not a warranty deed. It's not a simple deed. It's not a clear title. A quit claim deed is just saying, if we have anything, if we have anything, we're going to give it to you. 
if there's problems with the title work from the family or whoever had it beforehand, you got to clear that up outside of the tax sale. Also, when you buy these properties at the tax sale, you have a year that you can't really do anything with the property because if you go in and you start flipping it and you make any repairs, if the people come back and you haven't documented everything, you could flip a house for somebody for free. You could file, you could go to civil court and say that you bought it and you flipped it and you've got receipts and stuff. <clears throat> but that's a risk. I've bought stuff at tax sales before. I didn't buy anything today, but I have bought stuff at tax sales before and it's fun because you can get stuff pretty cheap. But <coughs> I want to go ahead and dispel any myths or rumors that you might be thinking about tax sales. You know, if a person has a mortgage on the property for $120,000 and they owe two years back taxes and they owe $1,500, the chances of you going to the tax sale and buying that property for $1,500 is very slim. Okay? The bank will probably front the money for the property taxes and just add that into the fees that they're gonna get when they go through the foreclosure stuff. Okay? More than likely, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. I'm not saying that there's not small banks that don't just miss stuff sometimes, but the likelihood of you really getting a clear title and a good deed on a property that's worth 120 for just what the back taxes are, it's very slim. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm just saying it's very slim that that will really happen. <coughs> okay, so after the tax sale, you know, I videoed the whole thing and I kind of stand out like a sore thumb because I've clearly done this stuff before. So a lot of people at the tax sale came up to me and asked me questions. One lady came up and said, you know, she had this list that was in the newspaper and other people had a list that they'd gotten from the tax office. And... Uh, she said, you know, there was a property that was on the list, it was published in the paper, but they didn't call it today, what happened? And that's, you know, either somebody like me bought the property before it went to the tax sale, or the people came and paid up the taxes, they either borrowed the money from somewhere, or sold it ahead of time, or, you know, they were just waiting until the last minute to pay their taxes, I don't know. But they paid up the taxes and it cleared it. And you can do that up to an hour before the sale. So, um, if you want to buy stuff at tax sales, what I would really encourage you to do is to get the list of what's going to be going on at the tax sale. Go do some research. Find the sellers. And do a deal with them. Because if this property goes through the tax sale, they're not going to get any money. And you're going to get a bad title. So even if you have to pay 1000 or 2000 or 5000 or 10000 more than the taxes, getting that clear title and having a marketable deed is going to be worth it. Okay? I bought a house and we closed on it yesterday. I was originally going to pay $10,000 for this house, and I had 45 days to find the money, okay? And then he called and said, uh-oh, it's going to the tax sale next Tuesday. We got to close last Friday. We had a couple title issues. We had to get an uncle down in Macon or Albany or somewhere to sign off on a quick claim deed that he didn't have any interest in the property so that I could have a clear title. <clears throat> but I went from paying $10,000 for this house to being under the gun and having to pay up the taxes and get it done fast I ended up paying 5500 for this house and if you follow my um, personal page on Facebook I took you through a tour of that house yesterday I've got it up on YouTube you can see the house I paid 5500 bucks for it plus taxes of a thousand so I paid $6,500 within like 10 days instead of paying $10,000 in 45 days. 
the reason I wanted to go ahead and buy that house, even if I was going to have to pay 5500 bucks for it, was because I got a good title. If I'd gone to the tax sale and paid $1,000 for it, I would have had a crappy title and there would have been no reason for that seller and that seller's uncle to give me a good title. So, if you want to buy stuff at tax sale, buy it beforehand. <laughs> okay? Tell them you'll pay up the back taxes plus give them 500 bucks. $1,000, $5,000. If it's a $100,000 house that they've got free and clear and they owe $10,000 in taxes and you can give them $10,000 plus the $10,000 in taxes and you can buy a $100,000 house for $20,000, that's looking good. All right? You got to have the money. You got to be ready to move fast. And when you're dealing with tax sales, you got to be prepared for bad titles and problems with the title. And you just got to tell your attorney or your title company that you want to buy this thing and they need to help you get it straight. That's it. That's the secret. Um, I will tell you that every county is different. Every county does their sale different. Every county does their rules different. In Knox County, Tennessee, if you go to the sale and you buy something, then everybody in the whole county has 10 days that they can go and open up your bid again. So if I bid, if, if the taxes were $750 today and I, pay, I agreed to pay $1,000, then everybody has the ability to go back and raise my bid by 10%. So they can open my bid back up for $1,100. And then in 10 days after the first sale, you can go back and they'll rebid it. And it could go up to $20,000. Knox County tax sales get on my nerves. But not every county is like that. I buy in Jefferson County, Tennessee also, and it's not like that. It was like the one today in Georgia, except it was inside. So if you want to go, they usually go pretty fast. Um, Knox County only does tax sales once a year, so there's a lot of people in the room. This county that I was in in Georgia today, they do a tax sale on the first Tuesday of every month. So there weren't a lot of people there, but that means you got a lot more opportunities to buy something. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, with my house that I bought, I plan on putting it out on the market for a handyman special and getting somebody to give me two or three or four thousand dollars to move into it and paying me three or four hundred dollars a month so that I'll have all my money back in about six months. My fifty-five, sixty-five hundred dollars that I had to put out for this house, I plan on having it back in about six months and selling the property for twenty or twenty-five thousand and letting somebody else do the work to it on a lease option. So sometimes I start with lease options in the beginning, sometimes I do lease options in the end, sometimes I do a sandwich lease option, but whatever you're doing is totally possible. You don't need a whole lot of money to get out there and start buying real estate. If you all have any questions, let me know. My name is Whitney Nicely. I'm the broker for Whitney Buys Houses, but you don't have to have a real estate license to go buy houses. You can go to tax sales, you can do lease options, you can pay cash, you can get the job done if you're willing to put the work in. I'll coach you if you want me to. Go to WhitneyNicely.com and let me know if you have any questions. Bye, y'all.